legend, and uh, that was that was amazing. Ian McDermott, all those folks, Mark Hamill, everybody that came out. It was just a big sacrifice of tech. And I, uh, uh, oh, okay. I, uh, it's been a year of counseling that continues. I'm available for grief counseling all day. All day. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but but the, it, uh, the clones aside, I'm going to throw out that I was really excited when Darth Vader reappeared uh, in Rebels, and just how frightening and formidable that guy appeared. I found that really exciting. I, I love that moment. That's the Matt Lantern experience. <laughs> Matt's like the nicest guy. <laughs> Matt, how about you? Is it the Ahsoka Vader? Yeah, I think the Ahsoka Vader thing, just because of the, what that means and the history that those two have, to see them squaring off, and he's so, you know, he's so gone. And the moment where he says Ahsoka, it's a kind of a fun, like, nerdy debate. Was he actually sort of reaching out and saying that as Anakin, or was he almost baiting her as Vader, because he's just completely gone to kind of, let her guard down, and then... What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I said, come on. No, no, somebody asked this, actually, and, and I, I wasn't sure. I don't know, maybe I mean a little bit more... I want to believe there's good, but I don't know. It was just so clouded at that moment that it might have been baiting her. Sorry. <laughs> Honored that some of the Clone Wars material is now being used to shape that character for the future. So, you know, as a contribution of, of that, uh, you know, that's a really an honor to be helping shape the character for what's to come for Anakin. Hopefully, we see more of that character. I love that. Um, but yeah, so in the next 15 years, I, just, I, I love that the Clone Wars um, filled in so many gaps for so many people on a character level, on a story level, and, you know, all kinds of stuff, so. 20 years, we're going to be wheeled out on the stage. <laughs> I remember when Cory Burton was sitting there. Uh, I'm done talking. <laughs> Hello, <That's> guys. <laughs> Hello there. <It's> a <laughs> this, <laughs> this will be our glory in, <laughs> in, in two or three decades. It's, it's, we're never going to stop this. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the love of, of, of these stories, I don't think it's ever going to wane. I think it's going to continue to grow and to build. And um, and it's a wonderful thing to be a part of that. And I, I, I can't see that doing anything but continuing to blossom well into the future. There's many, many years coming. And uh, one thing I'll share, specifically about Ahsoka, because uh, I've had this conversation with a couple of you, um, what many of you might not realize, and I didn't realize at first, uh, is that Ahsoka is meant to be the eyes of the audience. So you are meant to experience the Clone Wars through Ahsoka's eyes. And that's why we all feel so connected to her. Because as we're watching this war play out, we're seeing loss. We're seeing failure, we're seeing hope, we're grieving through, with Ahsoka, through her eyes. And, um, and so that's why there's such a deep emotional connection. And that's also why I say Ahsoka lives in all of us now, because it has been an entire generation. Um, and, and we feel fortunate that Clone Wars has been the Star Wars for an entire generation because really you know the lessons that we learn from star wars are so beautiful and life-changing and there's going to be the, i mean we're, we're already watching it the mandalorian there's there's the next round of stories the next generation of stories where that generation that's going to be their star wars and so um, it's going to continue, you know, what is, what is that next generation of Star Wars? Um, and we're very grateful that we got to continue the Star Wars stories um, for a whole generation of fans.
Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, th there's a friend of mine, Sohei, he's a podcaster, blogger, and such. And back when we were making this, he said, you know, 10 years from now, kids are gonna say, I grew up with this, and it changed the face of animation. And it did. Now we are 15 years later. It changed the face of animation. They created different ways to animate things for this because George Lucas had the ability to do that. And now all these shows are different because of Clone Wars. And so it has changed the face of all that. And I'm just so grateful because when I was a kid and I watched everything from you know, Bugs Bunny and all of that. What's up, Doc? And that was changing my world. And you're going, hello there. And that's changing your world because we're all affected by this in a, in a positive way. So it's, it's wonderful. It's a great honor to be a part of it. Thank you, guys. Are you yes, sitting in the <laughs> So I have a question. But first, I wanted to say um, I really appreciate about Clone Wars how much it is, maybe. Um, so my question for you, so you, so you play... I scream in the background every time you say a text name. <laughs> so you play a lot of different characters, um, and that's fascinating to me. Um, so what are some things that you do to be able to play such a variety of different characters that are all the same person? Like, what, how do you do that? How's well, that been for you? Well, voice actors are, it's really the, the DNA of our job is to be able to switch from character to character. Uh, most any animation gig that you have, you're, you're going to be probably doing two or three voices. Mm -hmm. And um, that really comes down to specific, the specificity of imagination. And, then, and also being, having a grasp of sort of the inner palette of voices that are within you. We all, we all contain multitudes within us. And that is our job to sort of gain control of that and awareness of that so that we can regulate it and let those jump out as whole uh, defined characters. And the longer you work, the more you get used to this. So it's just easy. You're just jumping from one to the other because it, the, the thing that makes it seem like a magic trick is it's coming out of a single human. But as the actor, you see these characters as their own individual entities, and you just snap from one to the other like you're throwing a switch. And it actually, it feels, it looks like a magic trick, but it feels easy to do once you have that kind of facility. It's like being- If you're D. Bradley Baker. <laughs> Man, there's so much science to it. I just think of the one and then the other, it comes down. Yeah, well, it's intuitive, ultimately. It is. It, it's ultimately an intuitive thing. But it, it's you, you kind of work out at the gym of being an actor and of improvisation, and you just kind of develop those muscles. So. I like you too because you're on camera actors and then go into voiceover and then on camera back and forth. Does it help with that? Yeah, sure. I, I feel like. I feel like exercising the, the voice acting really helps you uh, gain a, and control your your voice on camera and what subtleties and fluctuation, volume, and other things that normally pertain to voice acting can do for a character on camera. Um, it, it means a lot. So, yeah, that's a big thing that I feel like I've gotten to work on. The thing for me that was absolutely terrifying, and I'm not gonna go back to the early days um, <laughs> and share the stories I remember, you know, standing in front of Dee Bradley Baker, who is just a veteran uh, in, in our field, and um, the hardest part was having to make all the sounds for when you're fighting or a falling, um, and then when you would go, when you do it. <laughs> I wasn't very supportive. <laughs> he was. Sorry. He, he was. He was. It was just terrifying because they are so good at what they do. And you know, when you're a live action actor, which Matt and I, the pretty much all of our work was live action. Um, if you are fighting, you're really fighting. Um, you're not standing behind a microphone keeping your face still. And so I'll never forget um, when Dave Filoni, it was early on, it was, I forget which episode, it might have been the Geonosian Queen, 
episode, which D was just so brilliant in. <laughs> But Dave said, okay, Ashley, Ahsoka gets picked up by this giant bug thing, flown across the, the I don't, it wasn't even a room, but cavern or whatever it was, dropped, you know, 50 feet, or, you know, then she rolls three times and hits the wall. <coughs> <laughs> what does that sound like? And you have to do it, and you have to get it right within, like, three takes. And so it was terrifying, but you had to learn to be like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's scary, and then you also look really silly. <laughs> and an outsider, and always have, um, because most of the most of the clones, they're so physically capable and able that I don't relate to them as much. <laughs> but each one contains this kind of aspirational heroism for me, um, that they're, they're, they're just such great guys, almost all of them anyway, and, uh, and I, 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 wish, I wish that I were them, I wish that I could be them. I really wish I were Wrecker, I want to be Wrecker. <laughs> I'm probably the, the furthest from Wrecker. Um, but uh, but th this this kind of simple joy uh, and innocence and uh, and sense of fun that he has in the face of of, of, of change or danger is is really cool. So I, I really admire him a lot. Thank you. So what was, was your, your reaction? <laughs> <laughs> if the camera's rolling. Um, I thought it was really cool because one cool thing that happened with that is, is Rayco Hardin. And again, we got the script the day of. I remember Dee and I had a lot of lines in that one. And we get the script, we're looking through, and I'm going, okay, well, where's Obi Wan? Where's Obi Wan? Where's Obi Wan? Oh, he's, oh, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, he's not. Dead. Oh, I'm Rayco Hardin. I'm not Rayco I am Rayco Hardin. And did, so did you have a moment where you actually thought, oh, they've killed Obi Wan? I did. <laughs> The voice of Rayco Hardin was great because George Lucas said he didn't want it to be me. And Dave said, well, that's okay, we're gonna, you know, I still want you to do it. Let's just go ahead. It's my Dave. Your Dave Filoni sounds like Truman Capote. With a little, a little David Spade. But, so, I, I did. I killed Obi-Wan Kenobi. I did this Rico Hardin voice. And he said, okay, I know he can do that. So I, I did all these lines like that. And then they played it for George. And he, they said, what do you think? He said, yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's great. That's great. <laughs> so Dave Filoni and George Lucas are sitting there talking. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, no, but I loved the, I love the challenge was, how do you make Rayco Hardin sound like Obi-Wan Kenobi when he would call him and say, this is Ben. So he said, this is Ben. But I was thinking in my head, this is Beth. So it came out, this is Beth. And I still had kind of an accent, but not really an accent. It's very complex. <laughs> then when I got that, that little spider went down my throat and all that, that was really fun too. Because I did all that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I and love the Johnny Test shirt, James. It's totally awesome, right? So Johnny <laughs> Test is totally awesome. There you go. Had my time in the sun. <laughs> I don't know if I should be commenting on that. <laughs> Leave me, Leave me out of this one. <laughs> well, I'll start. Y'all can think. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you, and thank you for what you do. Ahsoka lives in you. Um, you know, my favorite Ahsoka line is from the final season of Clone Wars, where she says, In my life, when you find people who need your help, you help them, no matter what. I guess it's just who I am. And when Ahsoka said that line, oh, when Ahsoka said that line, she was lost. You know, she had walked away from the Jedi Order, walked away from everything that she knew. She had been betrayed. All of her, everything that she thought she knew was false. And I mean, she just was lost and broken. And she didn't know where she was going. And she found herself again by helping others. 
And I often say, and my, my parents taught me this, Mama and Papa Tondo are there. Um, as, as well as my sister, who has been helping me out at my table, her, her name is Tara, so we call her Tara Tano. Um, but, uh, so, my mom always taught me that the quickest way to help yourself is to help others. And so, if you are going through a hard time, um, just like Ahsoka, help others. And by helping others, you're going to help yourself. Amen, ditto. <laughs> Super Soul Sunday. I also want to highlight the scene in, in the cave next to the water where Tech is talking to Omega. <laughs> There was no scream that time I said his name. <laughs> it was just positive stuff. But, but there are a lot of people that have approached me uh, since, since that episode that really pointed out that that's like, and, and they say this again and again, that I felt seen. This is, I am different, I process the world differently, uh, and we can, we can talk that out and come to an understanding that that's just two different people that process differently and it's all right. And that's a great comfort to, to realize that and to be recognized for that and to be accepted for that. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like as well as subscribe to my channel if you haven't already or even click to watch one of my other videos and may the force be with you.